Intellectual Property Creation and Management for Emerging Growth Technology Companies. The Intellectual Property Mosaic. This presentation is brought to you by the IP Attorneys and Professionals at Halsey Intellectual Property Lawyers through the Halsey Intellectual Property Technology and Invention Monitor website. Halsey Intellectual Property Lawyers. IP Professionals for Entrepreneurship's New Golden Age. This presentation is part of the Technology and Invention Monitor website's Legal and Business Issues and Instructions resource. Intellectual Property Creation and Management for Emerging Growth Technology Companies. The Intellectual Property Mosaic. Let's begin the presentation. The intellectual property mosaic. By that I mean the interrelationship between the different types of intellectual property rights and then focuses in particular because it's so they are so relevant to technology companies. It, this portion addresses patents, particularly what the rights are in patents, what it takes to get a patent from a legal standpoint, and the different areas in which it may make sense to obtain patent protection. And for the purpose of understanding more completely the justification for patent, we've taken an, an opportunity to look at a new, a relatively new area of patent technology or patent law, in, in particular is the business method patent as an example of the type of patent that is available, but why it's important that we obtain patents in these areas for new functions and new structures that relate to business opportunities that exist within commerce, not only domestically but internationally, recognizing that the United States may be in the forefront of protection for business method patents. And then we'll conclude with some of the key concepts relating to both the power and the essence of patented technology. This Module 3, the Intellectual Property Mosaic, is part of the seven-module program of intellectual property value creation and extraction. So let's look at the IP mosaic. To begin with, there is the know-how that a company may or an organization may obtain or may generate within itself. And this includes, as we addressed in Module 2, the processes, uh, programs, there may be relationships, there may be people and their knowledge sets within the organization, but this collective know-how that an organization or company may obtain can be viewed as part of its intellectual property, particularly as it relates to contracts and the exchange of know-how and the obligations that exist between transferring know-how from one organization to another, those are properties. Those, these properties are their contract rights. And these properties in conveying from one organization to another, the contract rights that relate to these properties can be considered as intellectual properties that a company owns. Within this area of properties that may be protected by contract, there are areas and types of intellectual properties known as trade secret that are protected either by common law, that is case, law case, or, or, or lawsuit generated law, as well as statutory law in the sense that what a trade secret is and how it can be protected and what the ramifications of are for violating someone's trade secrets can be not only a function of common or, or, or court law, but also statutory law in the sense that they've been written in the statutes of a state or federal uh, law. So what is a trade secret? A trade secret constitutes something that is not generally known, something that is that gives value to the owner of the trade secret and for which there are reasonable efforts to maintain the secrecy of the trade secret. For example, a customer list, where it may not be a process, may not be any type of compound, a customer list can be viewed as a trade secret if it's not generally known who your customers are, that having that list of customers gives to the company that serves those customers a competitive advantage in the marketplace 
and then for which the company keeps secret, keeps either separate file or separate access, the collective information of who its customers are. That customer list can be viewed as a trade secret. One of the most famous trade secrets many people have heard of is the Coca-Cola trade secret. If you go to the book entitled, I'd Like the World to Buy a Coke, which is the business history of the former chief executive, Roberto Guazetta from Coca-Cola, there's an interesting chart in the book that details his uh, growth and accession to becoming the chief executive officer for Coca-Cola. And in that timeline, there's a specific point at which Roberto Guazetta was given the Coca-Cola secret. There are very few people in the organization at Coca-Cola who've been officially given the Coca-Cola secret. And so that type of information, that information is not generally known, the precise Coca-Cola recipe. It's something that gives to the Coca-Cola company an advantage in the marketplace. And there are efforts, very reasonable and very practical efforts, maintained to keep the secrecy of that information. And that's a piece of the corporate know-how as well. There are also patented inventions. We'll talk about what constitutes a patent, but that's know-how within an organization are obtained by way of purchasing the patent or otherwise obtaining rights to patents that an organization will obtain that gives it the ability to do things, whether it's licensing the patents for others to use or whether it's for the creation of new products or for the purpose of undergoing and maintaining certain processes within the company. The patent itself is, is a piece of the corporate know-how that's protected, at least in the United States, but also in countries throughout the world for inventions that are of a statutory manner. And from that information, the law has designed to protect these rights for a limited period of time in exchange for the disclosure of that information to the public. Another area of intellectual property right in this mosaic of intellectual property rights is the copyright. The copyright is a federally granted right that protects, again, for a limited period of time, a work that is reduced to a tangible medium of expression. And in a later course in this series, we'll talk about copyright as it relates to creative work and what those rights are. But suffice it to say at this point that a copyright protects that work which is original in nature and that is fixed in a tangible medium of expression. And the Digital Millennium Copyright Act has defined clearly that the presence of a document available on the Internet is fixed in a tangible medium of expression. The trademark. The trademark is a piece of intellectual property that is protected by both state and federal statute and common law as well. The trademark is any indicia, any logo, any symbol. The, uh, there have been efforts uh, ongoing, I think most recently unsuccessful, but uh, at, 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 at other times there have been successful efforts to obtain the copy of the trademarks for sounds, the Harley Davidson sound for many years was in prosecution as a trademark and many and they treated it so even though they did not obtain federal registration for, for the Harley Davidson sound as a as a trademark. But colors are treated or can be treated if they pass certain tests as trademarks to indicate the origin, for example, Big Blue in the computer industry is known as IBM. Its only purpose is to designate IBM. Uh, John Deere uses the color green as a trademark. And as a result of that, other companies cannot manufacture and sell the same green colored farm implements and tractors and tools because as a color, John Deere has that color as a trademark. Uh, there are other symbols and words. And as long as it's, it's clear within the mind of the public that the sound or the color or the word or the symbol, the Nike swoosh, for example, or even the Verizon check mark, for example, are in the world in which they operate, in the streams of commerce in which these companies operate, if that indicia is used to designate the origin of the 
source of the product or, or service, if it's used to designate the source of that product or service, it can be used as a trademark and can be protected under the federal trademark laws of the United States or the national trademark laws of other countries throughout the world. Most recently, there's been the adoption within the United States of the Madrid Protocol, which provides a mechanism for the obtaining of trademark rights from around the world as a result of a domestic United States filing. And we'll talk about that in some degree at the, in the course on the series relating to trademarks and copyrights. So this is the mosaic of intellectual property rights. And there's case law, and there's statutory law, and there's business law, uh, fascinating uh, set of case law. The establishment of the Coca-Cola mark is not only a legal history in itself, but the case law is in establishing the uniqueness of the Coca-Cola symbol is an example of a, a robust mosaic, a robust landscape relating to all of these valuable intellectual property rights. Let's take a minute now and transfer our focus to perhaps the most important intellectual property right for emerging technology fields, and that is the patent. The patent is a contract with the government. In exchange for the inventor teaching the world about his invention, the government and in the United States, the U.S. federal government, provides the inventor with the ability to exclude others from practicing the invention for the period of 20 years from, fi from the filing date of the application. And as a result of that, if you obtain a patent that protects your invention as a process for fabricating a semiconductor device, as a way of, of, of manufacturing an integrated circuit, as a way of operating a computer program, as a way of performing a business transaction, or as a new material compound, you are the only person, the owner of that patent is the only person who can do what is described within the claims of the patent instrument. The requirements of the patent are that the invention be a process or device. This is defined in the United States by Section 101 of Title 35 of the United States Code, that a process or device that is useful, novel, and non-obvious, or a similar but not identical concept outside the United States, involves inventive step, can be protected by patent. Section 101 defines what the word useful means. Useful is essentially can be used in any way, any practical purpose. The threshold for achieving the designation or satisfying the legal requirements for utility are very low. However, uh, it has been used in the past for denying patent protection for intermediate stages. Uh, for example, a biotechnology or a chemical process, if it's not something that is a static um, invention or static state for an invention, it's not useful. It's not something that you can use repeatedly. And as a result of that, the laws have uh, denied patent protection. Also, some inventions, such as pornographic inventions or other inventions that have no, that have a socially damaging effect, have been deemed as not useful by the patent statute. However, you'd be surprised what you could find in the patent statute of a uh, colorable nature that have been issued in terms of patent. Novel is defined, the word novel, the concept of, of novelty is defined by the patent statutes essentially as a barrier to make sure that when an inventor files for protection that he has complied with certain requirements, such as that his invention has not been on sale for more than a one-year period prior to the time that the application for patent was filed. On sale, I don't mean sale or sold, that it would be on sale, or that it not be publicly disclosed 
for more than one year prior to filing the application. There are other requirements that determine what novelty is. Non-obviousness or that the invention not be obvious is a requirement that relates to a legal standard more so than the term non-obvious, as might be known by the dictionary definition. In fact, all three of these phrases or terms, useful, novel, not obvious, are not to be understood by their dictionary definition, but have precise legal definitions established not only by statute, but also by the interpretation of the courts, particularly the federal courts within the United States, that determine what should be patented under the United States laws. Non-obviousness, for example, relates to the fact that an invention is obvious if there are two or more patents or two or more publications or a publication and a patent or a, uh, a collection of publications and patents and maybe an instance or public disclosure that when combined reach clearly the subject matter of the invention. Moreover, that there needs to be some indication within one of the references, for example, if there are two patents, there, if there are two patents that when together reach the subject matter of the invention, that there has to be some suggestion in at least one of these publications, at least one of these patents, that the, that the two references, the two patents be combined. And so as you can see, it's a legal determination that is very fact intensive, and it's not simply the legal definition. So what can you patent? Well, the, there are different things that can be patented for a given technology. There are different facets of technology protection. For example, at the most basic level, things that can be patented are ideas or, or, or formulas that can be used in specific technical, uh, technical applications. It's not necessarily the case that a scientific concept can be protected, because in that instance, it's a principle of nature, and for the most part, those can't be protected. However, the application of a law of nature can be. If a new way to synthesize a material is found, that process for synthesizing that new material not that, that achieves the new material, not the physical understanding itself as to how the, pro, how the synthesis occurs, the achievement of that new compound that's patentable subject matter. If there is software that's used for the purpose of understanding and implementing a particular process, that software as a process, it's statutory subject matter. Materials, new materials from a technological advancement can be protected by the patent laws. Components that use these new materials and may involve software, may involve these new principles, these components can in fact be patent protected. And then equipment and devices that may incorporate a number of different learnings, a number of different understandings, such as a uh, one example, it might be a way of heating a semiconductor device, such as a lamp array or some other type of, of, of chuck or some type of fabrication process, the generation of a particular type of plasma or a new type of thin film transistor may be a technology that would be useful for in terms of creating a new piece of equipment or a new device. And from all of these things, there may be systems that employ these new technologies. And these systems themselves can be protected by way of patent. Beginning in 1998, it was made clear by the United States Supreme Court that business methods are, are patentable, in particular, the Court of Appeals for the, for the Federal Circuit in the case, in the State Street decision, made it clear that business methods are patentable. And as a result of that, we've been able to obtain, and this, a lot of this came about as a result of the Internet and the technology that the Internet made available and, able to, and made us able to do business transactions in a way that we've not been able to do business transactions before the establishment and the use of the Internet. One of the most interesting ones for which there was substantial litigation and for which the patent was generally upheld was the Amazon one-click patent, which provided a mechanism for purchasing a product on the Internet 
by not using what's known as a shopping cart, by not having to go to the shopping cart with the purpose of providing to the Internet website particular information, that that information all be available and all be accessible to the user. And as a result of that, the uh, Amazon company who had that patent was able to sell more books and create more revenue. And as a result of that, and associated with that, they obtained patent protection. So all of these areas are areas in which it makes sense to pursue patent protection if there's a revenue stream, if there's a business benefit for doing so, or other professional or scientific benefit from doing so. Now, it's been said that there's certain categories for which patent protection can't be obtained. One is, for example, laws of nature. Natural phenomenon is another example. Abstract ideas, uh, another area for which it's been said that patent protection can't be obtained. And uh, for to now, uh, before 1998, essentially, it was uh, generally considered that business methods are not patentable. But let me tell you that as far as laws of nature, I have filed myself a number of patents uh, in the area of the related to the discovery of laws of nature and the utilization of these laws of nature for the one example has been the storage of spent nuclear fuel and the crystallization of the uh, cladding and the fuel within the within a spent fuel cell and how to essentially bake that and you use some interesting technology that would prevent that from being uh, uh, the loose fission products from going into the groundwater. Uh, natural phenomenon in terms of, of, of seeing things and doing things. I filed for patent and many other patent attorneys. It's common practice within the intellectual property practice to seek a way if a, a natural phenomenon is found the use of that natural phenomenon, if there's a if there's a technical result that can be obtained, can can be obtained or abstract ideas. I most recently obtained a patent for a method for teaching a, a student how to read. Uh, this process was a newly developed process developed at the University of Oregon for substantially increasing the ability of a child to read. Before you think that any one of these categories of subject matter can't be protected, it's strongly advised that you meet with competent patent counsel for his assessment as to how the value can be protected in something that you or someone in your organization discovered. So let's talk a little bit about business method patents and how they relate to patents in general and why they make sense. In terms of business method patents, it's been said that business process inventions are all obvious. Well, okay, when you see a business method patent, let's take, for example, example the Amazon one-click patent. Well, people will say, wow, I could have thought of that. Well, the fact is, all great inventions, whether it's the light bulb or whether it's um, a, a, a diaper that holds its uh, water and, and doesn't, and isn't wet on either side, uh, those, those are great inventions. They're elegant and simple in hindsight. And many business process inventions have proven by their commercial success that they have proved or solved significant problems in their industry. It's also been said that business method patents are special, that they are easily identified as a group and require special handling. There's no basis, as far as I can tell, for that, however, there is basis to make sure that what gets into the patent office is a good application for a good, novel, non-obvious, useful invention. And so the fact is that all process inventions consist of a series of discrete steps that business processes from a patent standpoint are indistinguishable from many other types of inventions. And further, for the patentability, as we've talked about, they must pass the same test as any other new, non-obvious, useful process. Business, patent, business method patents can be compared to other technology patents in the sense, well, look at this description of a process 
for exposing a semiconductor device. Process for manipulating data to control an electron beam to expose a semiconductor device. That would be, by most people, considered comfortably within the patent statute. Consider then the business process, a process for manipulating data to control the investment of monies to accomplish an investment strategy. If what follows from either one of these, introduce